You're watching the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray and S Pen need to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. And here's the S Pen. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the back glass plate. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna need to be disconnected from the main board. The wireless charging coil is located here, and the NFC antenna is located on top. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable needs to be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. Here's a better look at the top earpiece speaker, and this speaker has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. There's also an antenna board on the corner of the speaker. The main board is a dual layered sandwich design. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 200 megapixel wide, a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. All the cameras except for the ultra wide have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top. The LED flash is located here and the laser autofocus sensor is located above that. On the other side there's a proximity sensor, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a graphite pad over the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. Here's a look at the bottom speaker. The linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located in the speaker assembly housing. The bottom speaker also has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. This flex cable connects the screen to the main board. This one connects the main board to the subboard, and the same goes for this one. If you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, and then you'd remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove that speaker assembly giving you access to disconnecting the flex cable for the screen, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, reconnect the flex cable, and reassemble the phone. Now if you want to, you can also replace the screen from just the front. It will be a little bit more difficult, since it will be more difficult reconnecting this flex cable. You'd have to align the replacement screen perfectly, so when you press it down, it connects to that flex cable. From the looks of it moving forward, Samsung will be providing pull tabs or pull pouches to help you pry the battery off easier.
Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. So compared to the S22 Ultra from last year, we can see it's almost double the size. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. The primary microphone is located over here, and there's a red rubber gasket around the charger port. The SIM reader is located on the other side. The cover for the S Pen enclosure is held down with some adhesive, so that can be removed by just prying it off. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. So if you needed to replace that, you'd have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor to gently cut the glue around the camera and pull out the camera. The flex cable for the volume key and power button is located here. To replace that, you have to gently peel it off and lift up and pull out this metal bracket. Here's a better look at the screen. There's a copper film behind it to help transfer heat, and the fingerprint sensor itself is soldered to the back of the screen. Between the screen and the midframe, there's a layer of graphite to help transfer heat. Now we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber. Here's a side by side look of the S22 Ultra midframe and the S23 Ultra midframe. Again, we can see that the size of the S23 Ultra copper vapor chamber is almost double the size of the one from the S22 Ultra. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, you can apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. At which point you can power on the phone and you'd be done. Since the back glass I have is already cracked, I'm not going to reapply it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.